Welcome to our online broadcast. I'm Patrick and I'm an assistant curate here at St James and Emmanuel Didsbury in Manchester. We are a vibrant, inclusive Anglican parish that is rooted in Christian scripture and honours all of God's people. Today we begin our autumn sermon series, The Path of Discipleship, and we're going to be looking at calling and cost, service and fruitfulness, love and endurance, worship and witness. We're going to look mostly at what our discipleship means in our daily lives, at home, at work, at school, at church, in everything that we do. After we have heard our two Bible passages from Genesis and Matthew, I will share my thoughts on the call to discipleship and the similarities and contrasts between our call today and the call of Jesus' first disciples. Both passages will be read to us by Ian, and after my reflection, Stella will lead us in prayer. The first reading is from Genesis chapter 12, verses 1 to 4, the call of Abram. Now the Lord said to Abram, Go from your country and for your kindred and your father's house to the land that I will show you. I will make of you a great nation and I will bless you, and make your name great so that you will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you, and the ones who curse you I will curse, and in all the families of the earth shall be blessed. So Abram went, as the Lord had told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was seventy-five years old when he departed from Haran. The second reading is from Matthew chapter 4, verses 18 to 22. Jesus calls the first disciples. <clears throat> As he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw two brothers, Simon, who is also called Peter, and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the lake, for they were fishermen. And he said to them, Follow me and I will make you fishers of men. Immediately they left their nets and followed him. As he went from there, he saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, in the boat with their father, Zebedee, mending their nets. And he called them. And immediately they left the boat and their father and followed him. This is the word of the Lord. Our new series on the path of discipleship is an important topic because really it describes our whole lives. We are all called to follow Christ, so we are all on that path every day. Today we start the series off by looking at calling. Now I don't know how you respond to the idea of being called, but I think our responses can be quite varied. Some people resist the idea. They point to people like Abraham or Moses, or indeed those first disciples by the lake shore, and say that they were special people with a special destiny as leaders and trailblazers. That's not for the likes of ordinary people like us, they say. Some may be terrified, fearful that they may have to leave the security of the familiar and strike out into the unknown. Others may be waiting, even longing for such a call, but they don't feel that they've heard anything yet, and they wonder why. I think the first thing I would say in respect of these calls that we've just heard about is that they are non-normative. They are, in the literal sense, extraordinary. Abraham is, after all, the founding patriarch of the entire Judeo-Christian tradition. His experience is not going to be a common one. To be called to leave the security of one's homeland, to go to an unknown destination, a land that I shall show you, says God, on the promise of future blessings at an unknown time, is a daunting prospect. Sadly, of course, we see many people today who do make such a journey, from the familiar to the unknown, as the desperate boatloads who cross the channel every day make all too clear. But asylum seekers are driven not called, and they usually have to leave almost everything behind, whereas Abraham 
travelled with his flocks and his family. Nonetheless, he must have shared some of their fear and uncertainty. It is possible that some of us may be called by God to make such a journey, but not many, I think. The experience of Jesus' first disciples is perhaps closer to ours, but it is still, I think, non-normative. Now, they were not called by a disembodied voice to go to an unknown place. They were called by a visible and tangible person simply to follow him. He didn't give them a promise, but he did give them a purpose, albeit one expressed in a riddle. I will make you fish for people. But they were still called to drop everything, to walk away from their livelihood and their family, to walk into the unknown, to follow their charismatic leader wherever he led. Rather more of us, perhaps, may hear this sort of call, but I would still not describe it as common. Yet, I remain firm in my conviction that every single one of us who call ourselves Christians is called by Jesus into a way of life that we call discipleship. So how does that work? I think we've been conditioned to look on call as requiring a change of activity. Leave your home, leave your nets, leave your job. But I think the far more common Christian experience, common indeed to all Christians, is a call to a change of attitude, a change of orientation. The call of Jesus is simple, follow me. And we can follow him just as well as a teacher, a doctor, a midwife, an electrician, a student, a carer, a parent or grandparent, or any other role that we have in life, as we can as a priest or a missionary. Indeed, it would be a disaster if we all felt that we had a call to the priesthood and abandoned secular employments entirely. The world really needs the presence of Christian witness in every area of life. The new attitude that I've referred to means putting Jesus, rather than ourselves, at the centre of everything that we do. At the dullest moment of the most mundane part of our job, Jesus is there, just in front of us, saying, follow me. I'm here too, and you are living for me here. It means too that we shouldn't make any distinction between our Christian life and the rest of our life. If we're working, we work as a disciple of Christ. We live in our families as a disciple of Christ. We go to church as a disciple of Christ. And this, as many of you know, can be really hard, just as hard as being called out into the unknown. Indeed, part of the difficulty can be that we are staying within the known, the difficult, work or family environment from which there is no easy way out. And there too, we are called to bear the light of Christ. So one of the reasons why we get together on Sundays as a church is to share stories, to learn from each other, to encourage each other, and to be equipped to go back out into the world as disciples. A disciple is a follower of Jesus, not a follower of a rule book. If we're going to be good disciples, we don't have to keep the rules, if only it were that easy. We have to get to know the person who calls us. And we get to know him through spending time with him, in his words, as recorded in scripture, in prayer and worship, and in spending time with other disciples. Our character as disciples is shaped as much through contact with each other as through anything. And if we are listening out for the words of Jesus in our lives, they are most likely to come through the words of love and wisdom, perhaps of encouragement or challenge, of our fellow Christians. If we are listening out for the call of God, it may come through the perceptive friend who says, you're really good at that. Why don't you volunteer regularly? Or I love the way you explain things. Why don't you ask if you can preach? They won't always be right. But a voice from a fellow Christian is more common than a voice from heaven. That said, I do not want to devalue the reality of dreams, words from God, or sudden inexplicable senses of what we need to do. God speaks to us in many ways. 
I just want to close by saying something about time. The call to discipleship is not just a one-off thing. Indeed, there is a sense in which Jesus meets us every morning and says, Are you coming with me today? Try to imagine him saying that to you each morning and see what it does to your day. And perhaps slightly harder, imagine him at the end of each day saying to you, Were you with me today? And the other thing is this. Although I said that we are mostly called to a change of attitude rather than a change of activity, the latter always remains a possibility. Having been a teacher for 36 years, I am now a curate, and I trained with plenty of other people who were changing direction as they responded to the call of God. That may or may not ever be your experience, but no disciple should discount the possibility. If we are trying to follow him every day, if we are open to his call to be a disciple each day of our lives, then we will find that he will lead us into the paths that he wants us to take. Shalom. So let's prioritise our commitment to be apostles and look to fulfil our roles as disciples, as servants to our brothers and sisters, however and wherever their needs might occur. Let us share the wealth we have accumulated with those whose earthly wealth has been reduced by poverty, by inequality, by ill health or by human error. Lord, remind us all to cast our nets wide. Let us share the talents we have been gifted with, with those who have not had the opportunity of education, of access to teaching, of books, of equipment. Lord, remind us to cast our nets wide. Let us share the energies we enjoy with those who are depleted in mind and heart and spirit, recognising that the abundance of our nets of life are meant to be shared freely. Lord, remind us to cast our nets wide. Let us constantly fish for people, searching out ways to fulfil their needs from our accumulated storehouses of abundant assets. Lord, remind us to cast our nets wide. Let us journey where you would have us go. Let us lay down things, or if we have the courage, pick up things, pick up things anew according to your will in our lives. Lord, remind us to cast our nets wide. Now, let's turn to the rubric for living that you left us as we say together the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. I hope today's readings, thoughts and prayers are an encouragement to you in the week ahead. Let's finish with the grace. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, now and always. Go in the peace of Christ to bear witness to his love and forgiveness in the coming week. Amen. <laughs>